Hello, my name is Scott Richard, and I'm a gynecologic oncologist in the Pennsylvania area and a proud member of the Medical Science Advisory Board for the National Ovarian Cancer Coalition. I'm here today with Alicia to talk a little bit about biomarker testing. Hi, my name is Alicia Delario. I'm from Westchester, Pennsylvania. I'm an ovarian cancer patient and survivor. I was originally diagnosed with late stage metastatic ovarian cancer in January of 2014. I am here today to talk with Dr. Richard about biomarker testing and clinical trials. I've been in a clinical trial for four, four years now and have had no evidence of new disease. Excellent. So Alicia, what genetic markers do you have and how did you go about finding out about these markers? Um, after my initial diagnosis in 2014, I recurred in 2016 and we decided to do some genetic testing. And that is when at that point in 2016, I found out that I was uh, BRCA negative and that's all we know. And uh, while I didn't, um, I didn't necessarily want to be BRCA positive. I knew BRCA positive would open doors to other options for me. There were more, there were definitely a lot of trials going on in the BRCA positive arena. Um, and knowing nothing about my, uh, about my biomarkers and my genetic disposition of my tumor type, it was really closing doors for me for potential options. So I just, when I recurred in 2016, I continued with standard of care chemo. I recurred again in 2017 and I went with standard of care chemo. But during that period, the company I was working for had, uh, was doing oncology research and the president of oncology called me and said, hey, we just found out about this biomarker called HRD. And you should ask your oncologist to get tested for it. And I did, and I found out I was HRD positive. And I was so happy because I knew that at some point, likely I would recur again. Um, so I was just kind of in that, you know, it was turning into what it looked like was going to be, you know, a chronic disease. And um, so I thought, okay, great. This is good news. I know more. I'm not a wild type. I have a little more information. And so we'll see if I can use that later down the road. Excellent. I think you used the term earlier, HRD positive. What does HRD stand for? Yes, it stands for homologous um, re recombinant deficiency. Okay. If I even said that right, doctor, because I, I think you did. I think it's a homologous recombination deficiency. And, okay, recombination. Um, and did your doctors tell you anything about what that means? Not really. What I've learned, I learned online, and I actually just it's it's a little overwhelming to look at things online. So I'd love to hear you describe it in layman's terms. Yeah, so what we know is that there are a couple of repair mechanisms within uh, our, all of our cells, and particularly within cancer cells. And um, homologous recombination deficiency, or HRD, is a deficiency in the ability to repair double-stranded DNA. And so if you have that, we do know that you're more susceptible to DNA damage. It's interesting you said early on in your response that you were uh, very nervous about being BRCA positive. And then when you found out you were BRCA negative, you were kind of, you know, happy about that. And then when you found out you're HRD positive, you were happy about that. You know, looking back, what were some of the concerns you had you had about your genetic testing results, particularly the BRCA status? I thought the BRCA status, if I was BRCA positive, that I may... Um in my head, then this is me, this is not doing research because I didn't know a lot about all of this at the time, but I was thinking maybe that would mean that I would be um, at risk for breast cancer and then my sisters would have to worry about potentially ovarian cancer, even though we do not have it in the family and I had some risk factors and they do not have those risk factors. Um, it just made me feel like it would be maybe broaden my, um, my risk for other things, as well as my family's risk. And so when your uh, oncologist originally talked to you about the genetic testing, uh, was that, you know, a concern that you had that potentially not only would it be something that affect you, but then your family down the road? 
It was, I mean, I was really looking forward to having it because I, I did want to know. I, I was not somebody that didn't want to know. Um, I, I really want to know as much as I possibly could about what I was dealing with. Um, and just my only concern was, what if something is uncovered that is going to be larger than just me? When you had mentioned earlier, you used a term that I wasn't familiar with. You said wild type. What does that mean? So this is what my oncologist referred to my um, and and as well as the genetic counselor when I when I got the results back and all we knew was BRCA negative. They call it a wild type because they don't know anything else about what what this is and what my disposition is. Um, and and so it was just instead of I almost feel like unknown is maybe <laughs> a little bit better, but they always refer to it as wild type um, all throughout. You have wild type. So you, you know, even we, we looked into clinical trials when I recurred the second time after initial diagnosis and was in third line treatment. They said, no, they're, they're not doing trials with wild types. Right. So if I'm not mistaken, there are two terms that they use, and you'd use one before called wild type and then BRCA mutated. Are the BRCA wild type patients someone that does not carry the BRCA mutation? And you know nothing else about them. So they're BRCA negative and nothing else. However, I will say, at least that's my understanding of when they described it to me. But now I do know that trials are opening up for just BRCA negative, just pure BRCA negative, and we know nothing else about you other than your BRCA negative. 